One day when he was climbing the mountain, there was a heavy rain. The muddy slippery ground was not suitable for his feet and he fell, breaking his container and his foot. Very annoyed, with his container full of water, he uttered a magical spell for it to stop raining. By the effects of the hermit's merits, the naga stopped the rain. As there was no further rain, the five grain crops and the five fruits were no longer produced. The people were at the end of their resources and had no further means of livelihood. The king of Varanasi was angry and worried. He commanded his ministers to meet and discuss the matter of the rain. In the discussion, a wise man said, I have heard that on the hermit's mountain, there is a recluse called Unicorn. Because of his clumsy feet, he fell while climbing the mountain and hurt his foot. In his anger, he uttered a magical spell commanding it to stop raining for twelve years. The king thought and said, If it is not going to rain for twelve years, my kingdom and the people are lost. Then the king published an appeal to his people, saying, I will give half of my kingdom to anyone who can make this hermit lose his five super-knowledges and become an ordinary subject of mine. There was at that time in the kingdom of Varanasi, a courtesan named Chanto of unequalled beauty. She came in answer to the king's appeal. She asked people whether or not Ekasermga was a man. They answered that he was the son of a hermit. The courtesan said, If he is a man, I can get rid of him. Having spoken thus, she took a golden dish which she filled with fine precious objects and said to the king, I will sit astride this hermit's back. Then the courtesan got five hundred chariots in which she placed five hundred lovely women, and five hundred chariots drawn by deer in which she placed all kinds of magical cakes made with medicinal herbs. She painted them in different colors so that they looked like various fruits. She also brought all kinds of strong liquor which, in color and taste, were like water. She and her companions dressed in garments of tree bark and grass and wandered through the trees in the forest like hermits. They made themselves leafy huts near the hermit's dwelling and stayed there. The recluse Ekasermga, having gone for a walk, saw them. All the women came out to meet him and offered him lovely flowers and perfumes. The latter was happy with them. With sweet words and respectful expressions the women asked about the health of the hermit. They took him into a room, seated him on a fine soft bed, gave him some of the clear liquor, which they called cure water, and some of the cakes which they said were fruit. When the hermit had eaten and drank as much as he wanted, he said to the women, Since I was born, I have never found fruit so good and water so excellent as this. The women said to him, We do good with all our heart. This is why heaven grants us our wishes and we find these fruits and water. The hermit said to the women, Why is the color of your skin so gleaming and so fresh? They answered, It is because we always eat these good fruits and drink this excellent water. The women said to the hermit, Why not settle down and live here? He answered, Indeed, I could live here. The women invited him to bathe them and he accepted that also. The women's hands touched him gently and his mind was moved thereby. Then he bathed in the company of these lovely women and, as lust had developed in him, he committed lustful actions with them. He immediately lost his super-knowledges and the heavens let fall a great rain for seven days and seven nights. The courtesan allowed him to give himself up to pleasure, to eat and drink for seven days. At the end of this time, the liquor and the provisions were entirely used up, and they substituted mountain water and the fruit of the trees for them. But the taste was not at all pleasant and the recluse demanded the food that he had been given previously. The courtesan answered, There is no more. Now we will go and gather some. Not far from here there is a place where we can find some. As you wish, said the hermit. Then they went together. Knowing that the city was not far away, the courtesan lay down on the road, saying, I am at the end of my strength and I cannot walk any further. The hermit said to her, If you cannot walk, get up on my back, I will carry you. Previously the woman had sent a letter to alert the king, saying, O king, you will see what my wisdom can do. The king ordered his chariot went out and saw the sight. He asked the courtesan, how did you manage to do it? She said, 
I achieved this result by means of the power of my skillful means. There is nothing that I cannot do. The king commanded that the hermit remain in the city. He made him abundant offerings and treated him respectfully. He satisfied his five wishes and named him prime minister. When the hermit had lived in the city for some days, his body became emaciated. He thought of the joys of meditation and was weary of worldly desires. The king asked him why he was unhappy and why he was becoming thin. The hermit replied, Although I enjoy the five objects of desire, I am always thinking of my forest retreat and the place frequented by the hermits. I cannot detach my mind from that. The king said to himself, I am doing violence to this man. This violence makes him unhappy. His suffering is extreme and he will die. My original purpose was to put an end to the calamity of drought and now I have attained it. Why should I still do violence to him? Then he sent him away. The recluse returned to his mountain and thanks to his exertion, he soon recovered his five supernologers. The Buddha said to the Bixus, The hermit Ekasamga was myself. The courtesan was Yasodhara. At that time, she led me astray with a cake and, as I had not cut the bonds, I was seduced by her. Again today she wanted to seduce me by means of the cake with medicinal herbs but she did not succeed. For this reason, we know that slight attachments can trouble reclusism, all the more so, worldly people. For these reasons, subtle desires are condemned. b. Second method. Removing the obstacles. Having thus condemned the five sensual desires, it is necessary to remove the five obstacles. 1. Removing envy. The person who is prey to envy strays far from the path. Why? Because envy is the basis for all sorts of worries and chaos. If the mind is attached to envy, there is no way to approach the path. To remove this envy, some stanzas say, how can the monastic, modest and reserved carrying a begging bowl and benefiting beings still tolerate impure envy and be plunged into the five attachments? The soldier clothed in armor, bearing a sword and a rod, who withdraws and flees from the enemy, is nothing but a coward, scorned and ridiculed by everyone. The bhikshu in the role of a mendicant has cut his hair and put on the kasiya but still allows himself to be led by the horses of the five attachments, he too collects nothing but mockery. If a famous man, richly dressed and with body adorned went to beg for clothes and food, he would be mocked by people. If a bhiksu who has renounced adornment, scorns fashion and concentrates his mind and, nevertheless, seeks sensory pleasures, he too would gather only mockery. Having renounced the five sense pleasures, Having rejected them, having refused to think about them, why would he follow her after them again? Like a madman who returns to his own vomit, the greedy man ignores his earlier vows, he no longer distinguishes between the beautiful and the ugly, drunkenly he hurls himself into desire.